Hello everyone, welcome to the At The Races flat season preview show on At The Races YouTube and at attheraces.com in association with our friends at William Hill. I'm joined in the studio by former champion jockey Seb Sanders and via the uh, brilliance of modern technology, uh, Kevin Blake, who is over in Ireland, sat where he sits most of his life. Now, <laughs> we have three sections to this flat season preview show, sponsored, of course, uh, by William Hill. Uh, there are the Colts, there are the Phillies, and there are the older horses. You will fan find uh, the Colts and the Phillies elsewhere. However, we are now about to chat about the older horses. And I think it's fair to say there's some pretty much strength in depth when it comes to the older horse section. We're going to get straight into the arc, which, of course, will seem a long way away, but gives us some real firm middle distance horses to enjoy. Hurricane Lane, of course, for Godolphin, the St. Ledger winner at eight to one. Luxembourg, who may, of course, have won the 2000 Guineas, may have won the Derby, may have won the boat race by the time the art comes along uh, at 14 to one. Sharia will be going for Japan at 16 to one. Seal away at 16s, Torquato Tasso at 20s. Remember him? He's done quite well in this race before. Adeyar, the derby winner from yesteryear at 20. Agave or Agave, who of course made his name at St. Cloud at 25 <laughs> to 1. If you're wondering why I'm calling it St. Cloud, watch the three-year-old Colts section. Native Trail at 25 to 1, who by now might have won the 2000 Guineas, the Jubmont International and the Ark at 25 to 1. Corobus or Coribus or Coriabus at 25 to 1. In Spiral, might have won the 1000 Guineas and the Oaks by the time the Ark comes along at 25 to 1. Or, of course, they may have all had a mare, like Mare Australis who is at 25 to 1 as well. Lots to get stuck into there, Seb. If you were going to have an anti-post bet on the arc and you don't just have to say Hurricane Lane because you work for Charlie Appleby, what would you get stuck into? I think if he's right, I think Ade, yeah. The derby winner? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. I don't Do you think I... he went off the ball a little bit? Um... I don't know, really. Well, I what mean, do you think? I just thought he was impressive in the derby. Well, did he go off the he ball or didn't he go off the ball? very good King George. Mm -hmm. um, and come to the back end of the season, you know, th th these things can happen. Let's just hope we haven't, that, you know... That, so he did go off the ball? Let's just hope, Matt, that... Did he go off the ball or oh, didn't he? Possibly, yes. <laughs> no, did he or did he not? As in, I'll, I'll read you out his form, yeah? yeah. Epsom Derby win, <laughs> King George win, Ark lose, champion stakes lose. Yeah. Did he go off the boil? Possibly, yes. But, listen... You're like Kevin Blake. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't answer straight questions. No, look, I, I thought he... he... Oh, I'll try one more time then. Did he go off the boil? <laughs> Possibly. Oh, oh God's sake. <laughs> OK, carry on, I give up. <laughs> oh, don't be like that. Well, I give up. <laughs> Right, OK, so you think he can bounce back as an older horse? He always I looked quite a big beast. He's a, he's a big beast. Um, I thought he won a very good King George. Um, what? I, th I thought that was a good King George. How many were in it? Four. And you think it was a good renewal? Oh, yeah. OK, uh, there was interesting. A, they, 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 weren't, they weren't mugs in the race, that's for sure. Um, but, um, look, he's a, he, he's a big, scopey horse and uh, looks... Physically, like he'd be a better four year old than he was at three, he'd be stronger. Lone Eagle, Broom, Love, mm. who I'm afraid by then had long gone. Yeah, Miss Riff, who doesn't stay. And you think it was a good King George? Well, you know, Miss Riff, Love, Broom. Yeah, I've just read those names out. They're proper, they're proper horses. <laughs> yeah. They're proper horses. Look, I love how they are, but I'm not sure it was a good King George, if we're to be fair. It was a poor King George, wasn't it? Mm, no. I, I, I... Well, Mistriff doesn't stay. Love had clearly not trained on by then. Broom has never been great. And nor is Lone Eagle. So what, what mark would you say that Mistriff ran to in that race? Approximately 122, three-ish. So Adia ran to what? Approximately 124, five-ish. 
<laughs> and you tell me what good horses are, are, are rated, Matthew. Come on. Come on, you said it's a bad King George. <laughs> it's a bad King George. They wouldn't be rated over 120. And you've just told me how the year's rated 127. Well, good, a really, a really good horse is 130 plus. <laughs> but okay. Well, what did you? Let's go to. I don't know. Enable never broke 130. I no, can't believe. She was that. a mare. She couldn't. Oh, stop she gets it. Gets the allowance, doesn't oh, she? Oh no, no, no! Stop it. <sighs> Kevin, you'll be telling me Honeysuckle <laughs> would have won the King George if you carry on like this. <laughs> um, right, Kevin Blake. What's your thoughts on Aliar? Quickly. Um, I like him. Like, I think the, what happened, I, like, I thought he ran very well in the arc last season, you know, given that he, like, I don't know if they had their time again, if they do it the same way, and that he, they sent him there fresh, and he was kind of too free, wasn't he, up the front end, and um, the ground was probably softer than ideal, and he, he kind of ran himself into the ground, but, but it was only very late that he kind of gave way. You know, I thought that was a big run. I thought that was, while in form terms, it wasn't his best run of the season. Like, I, I thought that was a very good performance in, in, the, in, the, in the context um, then he went to Ascot and was disappointing, but maybe it came a bit quick after Longshawn, possibly. So, um, no, I'd, I'd, I'd like to be interested to see how he's, uh, you know, how he's come through the winter. Has he relaxed a little bit as he gets older? Um, I, I think you have to have him right in the mix of, of the best older horses around. I know, just talking about anti post for the, for the art game, I know you'd be totally ground dependent, but you get 20 to 1. If, is it not worth just having a. A couple of quid each way on Torquato Tasso, just completely in the hope that it comes up heavy. Because if it comes up heavy, he's got every chance of winning it again. Yeah, and like we've seen it like a number of times in recent years that so the grounds come up heavy there. And like, look, he was, he was a million to one in the arc. Nobody wants to believe it. But like he had, you know, a good level of form coming into the race. It just, he just was, didn't have the sexiest of profiles. Um, so it wouldn't be the maddest thing you've ever suggested, Matt. But in fairness, that's a pretty competitive heat. Um, you know, in fairness to me, he won on merit on the day um, in conditions that clearly suited him really well. So, it, you know, you're essentially betting on uh, what the ground's going to be at yeah, the long shot. But you're getting 20. As well as, you, look. as well as him getting there in one piece. But um, whatever pleases you, Matt. <laughs> yeah, but. At the end of the day, he's not four or five to one, is it? He's a 20 to one shot, and he won't be 20 to one if the ground is heavy. That's basically what I'm saying. It's just, if you look, your figures, you yeah. could, if, you, if you're trying to have an anti post bet, you don't have to bet anti post. Japanese have got a great chance of winning their first start. You would hazard a guess, judged by what's been going on in the world over the last five, six months, Kevin. I mean, <laughs> you'd be crazy now, I think, to say that Japan won't be winning the arc in the, in the nearest future. Yeah, God, it's been fantastic to watch. Now, I'd be a huge fan of Japanese racing and their breeding industry and what they've been doing there for decades and decades. And like the last, like you said, the last six months has been unbelievable. You know, Breeders' Cups and, um, you know, what they did in Dubai and what they did in Saudi. And, you know, they've had this kind of long standing, decades long quest to win the arc. Um, with a couple of heartbreaking defeats there, but um, yeah, we'll see what gets there in the end. But I tell you, I'd be I'd be delighted to see them win it. It'll be uh, it'll be well earned at this stage after our favour and a deep impact and a couple of big disappointments they had there. It's it's I'm not going to ask anti post bets for the arc in some ways because I think it's just it's a ridiculous race necessarily yeah. because until you know what those three year olds start yeah. to do, you know Luxembourg might be the greatest horse we've ever seen by the time the middle of June comes or something. It's like it's it's kind of a crazy but I do think Torquato Tasso, if you wanted to chuck a, a couple of quid each way to mudlark yeah. and then just pray for rain, half the fun of it will be watching the weather for the two weeks before the arc. <laughs> um, uh, then then you could do a lot worse than that. Um, the older horses for me, Kevin, are uh, are not the most exciting from the point of view of anticipation, but when you have a good crop they're exciting. And we seem to have quite a lot of exciting older horses. Let's go straight to the milers come mile and a quarter with you. And for most people, it was it's it's the year of Baid, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Look, he, what he did last season was incredible in my mind, Matt. Like he, he made his debut on, on June 7th. And by the end of the season, he, he was European champion miler. You know, went and beat Palace Pier, the established older, older, older champion. Um, I, I just, he was so impressive the whole way through. Um, it wasn't always ultra impressive every day, but um, he got the job done. And, you know, at Ascot, I don't think the race really went to plan for him or Palace Pier. It was a messy race, no pace. 
Um, but he got the job done, and it's fabulous that, that they brought him back. Um, he's the clear leader in the division. You know, if, if any of the three-year-olds are going to come up to take him on later in the season, you know, they're going to need to be a proper one because we've we a very good idea of how good this fella is. And surely, given that he only started last June, there must be more improvement to come three to four. And that's a, that's a pretty scary thought for anyone that's going to look to take him on this season. He does look really good, doesn't he, Bide? Yeah. Old Rose Meyer, he's, he, he's got that, that sorted out. Till, till after Royal Ascot, when he'll bump into the three-year-olds. Um, but the three-year-old bunch, I think, this year are, are pretty decent. Let's just check out some, some prices with our friends at William Hill for some of the big uh, events coming up. The Queen Anne by 11 to 10. Master of the Seas, I mean, he's, he's, he appears to be a good horse, Seb. Yeah. But whether, even if he improves a bit, which he might do, whether he's an absolute superstar, I think he's open to a little bit of question. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, he, you? He's, he, for once, he, 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 ra he, <laughs> he ran his race at Newmarket, but when, you, when you're going to dip your toe in against Bayid, um, I think he's on a different level. So uh, I think he's a very solid horse, but at Group 1 level... He needs to duck Bayid at some stage. And Kevin, Mother Earth is back, but to be fair, it's, it's a little bit about the situation we got with the 2,000 and 1,000 guineas this time around. The, the, the fillies, like Mother Earth sir, or mares getting older, look, I mean, she's, she's a good horse, but again, she's not exceptional, is she? Oh, look, she's been a brilliant filly and she, she's put together a great CV, but I don't think she's a tip-topper. Um, and, and I think if she meets a tip-top coach, she's always going to be in a little bit of trouble. But look, you look at the division, Matt, and like Baid stands out there like a sore thumb, but could she be up amongst the best of the rest? You know, I wouldn't like to rule it out. You know, I think Baid is well ahead of everything at the minute, and you'd be hoping that something will pop up out of the three-year-olds to, to to narrow that gap. But amongst the olders, you know, I think Mother Earth will, will make hay again this season, um, especially in Philly's only company, obviously. Yeah. I want to ask about, um, yeah, as I say, the, the, miling, the miling division is a little bit like the art division in that you're going to have these three-year-olds getting involved, whereas the sprinters... It tends to be harder for the, the perfect powers of this world just to, to yeah. take over. Having said that, I don't know about you, Seb, but I think there's a real changing of the guard in the sprinters. I don't think there is a, an outstanding sprinter from the UK. However, we've got Golden Powell and Nature Strip, and they look very good from elsewhere. I'm not convinced. I mean, Nature Strip's an eight-year-old, um, and although she's, she's very good down, uh, down under... Um, you sort of wonder why they haven't they haven't come at this neck of the woods uh, before. Um, and and um, uh, what's his name? To Pal Golden. Golden Golden Pal. Yeah, he's never been to St Cloud. Never been to St Cloud. <laughs> I think I think he needs to run round a Ben Matt. I, I I genuinely don't think he's as effective on a straight track. Really? No. Okay. Um, I mean, that is I, interesting. I, I, I think he needs a bend just to temper his speed a little bit. And, you know, I, I think he's vulnerable on straight tracks, um, unless they ride him a little bit differently. Um, I, I just feel he's, he struggles to hit the line. Is that purely because he's been to Ascot and York? Because, obviously, he's very lightly raced towards. He's only raced nine times. It's yeah. not as if he's, he's had many opportunities. I mean... Basically, he's just come out short in the UK, hasn't he, Golden Powell? He's just been a bit short over here. Yeah, you, you just feel that he's, he's just got a little bit too much speed. It's a different kind of racing in America to what it is here. Mm. Um, and, you know, speed is everything in America. But also, I think the bend tempers, his, tempers him a little bit and he, it makes him hit the line, whereas a straight, a straight sprinting track, I just, just don't, I don't feel it, it suits his style of running. Kevin, I must, we can't not talk about a case of you when it comes to the sprinters being absolutely fantastic for Aidan McGuinness. Brilliant in an abbey, but perhaps even more so out in Maidan uh, not so long ago. Um, just a great story, basically, a great horse racing story. 
Yeah, I think so. Look, at the time with the Abbey, you know, I think plenty of people thought it might just have been one of those kind of funny results you can occasionally get in that in an Abbey. But he's gone on and been even better out in Dubai. So, like, he's certainly the best sprinter in Ireland, and uh, which, which isn't always necessarily a high bar. But I think, um, but I think he is a very good sprinter. Um, and look, I hope the internationals come over. Um, to ask it, it does it does enhance it. You know the Americans, the Australians have been very very slow to come over. You know since since the glory days when they, when they were cleaning up the sprints, they, they haven't really come over in numbers for ten years or so. Um, there's plenty of chat that they will come over. Even on the Queen Anne betting, we saw a couple of Aussies there. I um, mean Animo and Zaki, and uh, I hope they come over. They they can often talk a big game about how they're going to come over, but they haven't been appearing in the last ten years. So hopefully they will come over and uh, join the Americans, such as Golden Pal, because uh, that's what makes Royal Ascot that bit special, man. Yeah, we're talking about the sprinters here on the At The Races Flat Season Preview Show. Remember, if you want to check out classic Colts and classic fillies, we have two separate sections uh, for those on At The Races YouTube and at theraces.com. Uh, fancy, uh, fans, uh, courtesy, I should say, of our sponsors, uh, William Hill. Um, I just want to have a look at some of Royal Ascot betting now, uh, Kevin, for the big sprints and the big six furlong sprint there, the platinum uh, Jubilee, of course, uh, or whatever it's called these days, something like that. Uh, there we go, Platinum Jubilee Stakes. The horse that I want to talk to you about is actually going to be my sort of older horse to follow. And he's down the bottom there, Dragon Symbol. And the reason I think he's interesting is, remember, he's gone from Archie Watson to Roger Varian. He was the Commonwealth Cup winner. He shouldn't have been disqualified. Uh, he knocked at the door in every sprint. And I don't know whether going to Archie Watson to Roger Varian will change him at all. But he deserves a, he deserves a big win. And I think he's a very good horse. He, he might have a very different campaign as well, having been raced a lot last year. I just think he's, he's interesting with the new connections. Yeah, it's a bit mad to think that like, he didn't run as a two-year-old. You know, he started off last March, and I think he ended up having 11 starts. In fairness to him, Matt, he was a model of consistency, but like you, you do, you do think that he'll need to improve from three to four, or, or for the, potentially the trainer swap to go and, and, and win a real big one. Do you, you think know, he I know Kev, do you think Roger Varian's better than Archie Watson? Um, well, look, if he does, if he does improve, Matt, you'll have a fair. No, but do you think he, he will? Do you think Varian's better? Well, he might improve from three to four. Might have nothing to do with the trainer, man. It's a very difficult thing to put your finger on if it happens. Yeah, but do you think the trainer's <laughs> better? I don't think so. Okay. You know, I think I think actually I think actually Watson got the horse to a very high level um, in a very short space of time, which isn't an easy thing to do. So, look, it'll be interesting to see how he goes from three to four, Matt. But look, he, I think he had lots of chances in, in lots of different circumstances last season, and he came up just a little bit short. And why you'd never like to rule out a horse improving a length or two um, from season to season, I think he'll probably need to do that to go and win a, a big group one. Dragon symbol, Seb? No. No? Not a fan? I wouldn't say I'm not a fan. I, I just think Sounded he, like you weren't. He, he, had, he had opportunities last year. Um, will, he get, will he dip his toe in a, a group one race uh, this year? Uh, be hard to say. I, I don't think so. Okay. I think he's had his opportunities. So, aren't we coming back, though, to, to what I started by saying? The, the sprinting division is wide open. Yeah, like, it it's is. ready, perhaps, for a three-year-old like Perfect Pad. Yeah. This is a division that something can emerge. Yeah, I think, I think the sprinting division's been like this for a few years now. Well, we've had Batash, to be fair. We had Batash, but, I mean, he was... Well, what do you mean? You talk about in disdain. No, I wasn't in disdain. It was. You had yeah, Batash. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, you know, when Batash was first on the scene... He had he had proper competition. The, the last few years of his career, he had no competition. That they'd, they'd they'd retired, with likes of Lady Aurelia and and the likes. Um, Blue point. Yeah. At, at at the moment, um, you know, th there's not a big jump from being a very good handicapper to being very competitive in 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 the big sprints. Um, so I, I generally th think it's it's a wide open category at the moment. Native Trail in the G July Cup. <laughs> That's a big shout. I'm just saying, mate. <laughs> I mean, the, the sprinter we haven't mentioned is what finished being behind Case of Law, Happy Romance, of uh, Richard Hannans. Oh, come on. That ran a massive race. Oh, the super sprint winner. It, it was drawn six. 
case, you're making a, a, a strong uh, case for a case of you. That was drawn 16. I on think the, that on, man of Watson's uh, a better horse. Will you let me finish? No, I suppose so. <laughs> The case of you was drawn 16 on the Golden Highway in, in Maidan. Happy Romance was drawn in, si drawn in six, and it all to do only got beat off a length, man. OK, thank you. Even the producer has said we've got to move this on. Um, that's, that's how desperate that suggestion was. Great horse for Sean Levy. Happy Romance, but surely not going to be champion sprinter. Uh, Asuka Gold Cup is, is looking terrific. True Shan Monobo, Mohotar, Stradivarius, Scope. Group one winner for Rob Hornby, of course, who has now become the alcohol-free man. I didn't even mention alcohol-free when we talked about the minors. Um, Tashkan, Princess Zoe, who wins the Ascot Gold Cup, Sebastian Sanders. I think it's all down to ground dependent, really. Well, that's that helpful. And as we were talking about the sprinters, I think the stayers are in the, in the similar vein in where there's no real standout sprinter, uh, stayer, sorry. Um, True Shan on soft ground is probably the best stayer out of the lot of them. Um, I really like Manabo, but I'm not convinced he's an out and out stayer. You've got um, Stay Foolish for Japan, who ran in Maidan as well. Mm. I mean, yeah. Scope? I mean, scope stays. But I mean, the Japanese horse, I mean, you've mentioned it before. They, they all go back to either Sunday Silence or uh, King Mambo. And um, their, their breeding policies are, are, are really coming to fruition. And I think that's why they're as competitive as they are at the moment. Kevin, who wins the Asuka Gold Cup? Um, and look, the, the ground as Seb says oh. will be important. You know, if it comes up rattling fast, true well, Shan's probably good. just not going. Let's just well, say it's good. Up, if it comes up, if well, if it's good, it's for true Shan would probably be up in the air, wouldn't he? Um, like if if he runs, he probably wins. You know, there would have been a small lingering doubt about his his stamina for two and a half, or not so much his stamina, but his ability to relax over two and a half because he he can pull quite hard. And uh, when he went to France and beat Stradivarius like he did, you know, being as strong as he was in the final of Furlong, I think that that allayed some of those fears. It was great to see him come back at Nottingham and win like he did the other day. Um, like, he's not straightforward. I think Holly does a great job with him. Um, and look, if there's any sort of an ease in the ground at all, he's going to take a lot of beating. But I think I'd actually agree with Seb on Manabo. I think he's a hyper-talented horse. But, geez, he pulled like a Mustang in the Dubai Gold Cup. I don't know. I was watching the race, and after a mile, I said, this horse cannot possibly be involved in the finish after pulling that hard. And he nearly went and won. You know, the Japanese horse, um, Stay Foolish, just nipped him. You know, I thought that was a huge run. And I think we're going to see more of him, but I certainly don't think it'll be over two and a half miles or maybe not even two miles. I think he'll be dropping back in trip. Um, but I'd, I'd love to see Stay Foolish run in the race, Matt, mm. um, because he was very good in Saudi. Um, he, you know, it was a bit more workmanlike in Dubai, but he, he, like, he looks a particularly strong stayer and two and a half okay. miles around Ascot, I'd say, will suit him well. So he'd okay. be a fascinating contender. Kev, we, we've got to wrap up and we've got a lot to get through in about two minutes. So, first of all, Kevin, your older horse to follow this season is... We haven't mentioned him. State of rest. Cox played winner. Getting get no respect at all, Matt. He's going to start in the pre gane there in two weeks. And uh, he might surprise a few back in Europe, hopefully. He'd have to. Um, Seb? <laughs> I'm going to throw in a curveball here. I want to say quickly. my Oberon, William Haggis's, in the fact that I think they need to drop him back in trip. OK, my Oberon, who was a tough winner at Newcastle the other day. My older horse to follow, and I'm going to be mocked, so luckily we haven't got much time to talk about it, Dragon Symbol. <coughs> I think this is a very interesting sprinter now with Varian. Right, anti-post bet, Kevin is... Older horse, come on, you're meant to have looked at this up. Stay foolish. Gold Stay foolish cup. in the Gold Cup. Oh, God. Um, Seb? <laughs> Um, I said quick. <laughs> you are meant to have thought about this. <laughs> well, go Manabo. Manabo and the Asuka Gold Cup. And you know what? I think it's a great each way bet. I really do. Stradivarius and the Asuka Gold Cup. They'll mock me for this. But he's 10 to 1. What do you want from an anti post bet? You want to know your horse is going to run in the race. Stradivarius is going to run in the race. 
and he's 10 to 1, and he's done it before. And I don't think age matters in Gold Cup horses or sprinters. Right. Um, right. A jockey or trainer to follow this season? Blake, oh, quickly. Oh, jockey. There's, quickly. Um, there's, a, there's a young lad riding in England that I do like, Tyler Hurd. OK, he's, thank uh, you. He's going, to be, he's going to be on Team Ireland in the racing league, Matt, so you're Seb. going to be seeing plenty of them. Seb? Quickly. David Prober. David Probert, and I wanted to chat. I only put this guy in because I wanted to chat about him, but we've got no time. Uh, Buick, who is not only going to win everything, but it'll have won the Jockeys Championship after about a week, and that was the incredible flat season preview sponsored by William Hill.